Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys. Welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people seem to think the world's all about them. And in today's episode, OP tells a story about her entitled friend who demands her house for one dollar. It's wild. Guys, I hope you enjoy the stories. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. Let's dive in. So I've got a story that really shook me up, and has left me flabbergasted at how entitled some people can be. I live next to a couple in their 50s. The husband has dementia, and it's really unfortunate to see him going through that. But here's where things go south. His wife, my neighbor, constantly lets him wander around unattended, often in my yard. Yesterday, I discovered him climbing on my shed in the backyard. Concerned for his safety, I immediately call my neighbor to come get him. She arrived, but she did nothing. She just stood there watching as her husband then jumps off the shed and hurt his leg. Now I thought she would be grateful that I looked out for him, but instead, she called the cops, alleging that this was my fault he got hurt because it happened in my yard. The woman was yelling and making a huge scene, saying I should have done more to prevent the accident. The officers were pretty understanding once I explained the situation and they saw my surveillance footage. They agreed it wasn't my responsibility to supervise her husband, especially when she lets him wander without any oversight. However, the nerve of this woman. She had the audacity to blame me for this incident that she could have easily prevented by properly caring for her husband. The entitlement is mind-blowing. Now I'm left wondering if I should install a fence, or what measures I need to take to protect myself legally because this is beyond ridiculous. Yeah, so that totally was ridiculous, and in my opinion, OP needs to get that husband some help because that man might be in danger, guys. And I don't know what the heck that wife is trying to do. Like, is she waiting until her husband does something that will result in getting an insurance claim? I have no idea, but the fact that she ended up calling the cops alleging that it was OP's fault totally screams, I'm setting you up for a lawsuit here. But with that said, OP needs to get a fence installed immediately so that man cannot get onto his property again. So about a month ago, I posted a story about my entitled neighbor Linda, and how she was rude to me about opening a gate in our community that escalated into getting yelled at by her daughter Victoria, and banned from her house. This resulted in Linda reaching out to me with a profuse apology and flowers. While the flowers did make my brother sneeze, Linda did seem repentant and she was allowed over for the first time, maybe a week or so ago. She behaved herself, so Victoria and I expressed our hopes that maybe she did learn her lesson. That was until last night. Victoria's brother, let's call him Kevin, was killed in a car accident a few days ago. Since Kevin lived in Texas, Victoria and the rest of her immediate family booked a flight to help arrange and attend the funeral. Since Victoria and I are next door neighbors and friends, she gave me an extra copy of her keys and asked me to keep an eye out on their cat and house it. I agreed because this was an emergency and I would trust her to take care of our house if something similar happened. Yesterday morning, Linda knocked on my door, and she politely asked me to let her into Victoria's house because she had forgotten her prescription. Now since I wasn't sure if Linda was allowed, I texted Victoria to make sure it was okay for her mom to go in. Victoria said it was fine, so I let Linda in. While we're in, I checked on their cat, and I admit this was a huge mistake on my part. I was only gone for a moment before Linda said she found what she was looking for even showing me the medication bottle she misplaced. Satisfied, I locked up and Linda left. Several hours later, my brother Mark and I decide to go for dinner, because neither of us felt like cooking. When we returned, we saw that some of the lights in Victoria's house were on. I knew I hadn't turned them on, and those lights weren't on a timer. So I called the police, explained what's going on, and asked them to come over and check because we aren't stupid enough to go inside and confront a potential burglar. Fortunately, there was a couple of officers, let's call them Warren and Leo, close by. So they came over within a few minutes. While we're explaining what's going on, who would come out of the door but Linda? She was wearing a bathrobe and she had her hair wrapped in a towel, which added to everyone's confusion. Officer Warren says, Good evening, ma'am. Sorry to disturb you, but do you live here? Linda, looking confused and like a scared rabbit, says, No habla inglés which means I don't speak English. That's when Officer Leo says in Spanish, Excuse me, ma'am, do you speak Spanish? And hearing that, Linda's eyes lit up, probably thinking she had a way out. 
Speaking rapid-fire Spanish, she got close to Leo and was patting his arm like she was his mother, occasionally pointing at Mark and me. Officer Warren, Mark, and I watched this with uncomfortable confusion. I don't know how Leo was able to keep his cool during this because it was really awkward for everyone. Leo then came back to us with Linda still clinging to him. Officer Leo then says to us, so she says she got permission from her daughter to come inside to take a bubble bath in their new jacuzzi bathtub and that you let her inside. Is that true? Hearing that, my jaw drops. I said to him, I did let her in earlier today because she said she forgot something at the house. We went in and left right after she found it. I have no idea what she's talking about, but I do have her daughter's number if you want to talk to her. At this point, the color drained from Linda's face and she let go of Officer Leo trying to edge back to Victoria's house. That's when Officer Leo stops her and asks, Hey, is there something wrong, ma'am? Linda then drops her act and says, Alright, I just wanted to try out my daughter's new jacuzzi while she was gone. I got OP to let me inside earlier, and while she was checking on my daughter's cats, I unlocked the back window and then took an Uber here this evening to enjoy my bath because I knew these two would call my daughter or you guys with a convoluted story. I was just going to take my bath, clean the tub, and leave. My daughter wouldn't have even known. So to end the story, Linda spent a nice night in jail, because nobody was there and they didn't want to bail her out. Victoria's done with her mom's behavior. I suspect that she's going to ban Linda from the house. And I learned that some entitled people are just too dumb to realize that just because you're getting along with someone doesn't mean you get to make the rules. Oh boy, I just hope Linda learned a lesson that just because your mom doesn't mean you can do stuff like this. Like the entitlement is so strong with this mother. She's banned from her daughter's house. She knew she wasn't allowed there, yet she still broke in to take a bubble bath. And on top of all that, she had the nerve to say it was OP's fault she was caught. Some freaking people, I tell you. So for some backstory, I'm a 31-year-old female, and I grew up pretty poor. Now, I don't remember it well, but at one point, my parents and I were only able to afford to eat beans and rice. My parents have since been able to pull out of poverty, and while they're not rich, they're comfortable. And I've used a lot of what I experienced as a kid as motivation to be super careful with my money. I got a job in high school, worked odd jobs on the side, saved up every penny, rode my bike everywhere instead of driving, and by the time I moved out of my parents' place, I had a little over $17,000 in my savings. I don't have that much tucked away anymore, but I do have investments and emergency funds and take my family's finances incredibly seriously, as I never want my children to experience what I did as a kid. Mine and my husband's financial choices afforded us the opportunity to purchase a home in the beginning of 2015, which we bought 50-50 with his mother. He paid his half up front and I made a large down payment. His mom covered the rest with the agreement that I would pay off what she had purchased. I have since completely paid my half and the house is fully owned by myself and my husband. It's a four bedroom, one and a half bath, two story home with a finished basement attached to car garage on a double lot. We got the house for an absolute steal at only $118,000. And since purchasing, we've installed a fence, updated the oven, washer and dryer, water heater, furnace, and paid for materials to have the interior rooms painted. The only updates it needs are purely cosmetic. The exterior paint is an ugly brown pink color. The hardwood floors have some distortion due to it being a hundred year old house. And the bathroom could use an update, but structurally speaking, it doesn't need one. Needless to say, on a scale of 1 to 5, with 1 being tear down the house and start over, and 5 being it's ready to put on the market to sell for 300000 today, the house is sitting at a 3.5 to 4. So with the backstory complete, let's get into what's become my biggest headache for the past 4 years. I have a friend who we'll call Carly. She's 27 years old. She had similar experiences to me growing up. But she struggles with finances and she's never seemed to get the hang of keeping any sort of savings over $50 at a time. Now I'm not sure if it's a lack of self-control or that she's simply too focused in the moment when she gets paid and she doesn't think long term, but she consistently makes her lack of funds everyone else's problem. I don't blame her for having issues with money, as learning to create a budget isn't exactly taught in school, and it took me years to learn to find a healthy balance. The freedom of being able to buy whatever you want with no restrictions is super tempting, but at some point, you have to learn to take responsibility. So during the course of our friendship, I've helped her build countless budgets based on my own. 
I make roughly the same amount of money as her, but each time they failed for whatever reason. I've told her many times over that the money in her account wasn't to be touched as everything needed to be used for bills, etc. And each time she would wind up still using every penny. It finally came to the point where I refused to help her with her budget anymore because she never listens to my advice. And when I pointed out that she needs to get her spending under control, she said, quote, I don't need to be treated like a child who receives an allowance, which is fair enough. I washed my hands of that topic. With that said, Carly moved out of her mom's house a little over six years ago and into a mutual friend's place who we'll call Tia. 27 years old. As far as I've been told by Tia, Carly paid nothing in rent, even though they both worked at the same company and they made close to the same salary. Carly's living space was an absolute disaster. She moved into the basement and it was lucky if there was even a walkway to get to the washer and dryer. She constantly asked me to come over to help clean her place and organize. And each time we would make significant progress. But by the next weekend when I would come over again, it was as if a tornado had gone through her space in the course of the week. I have no idea how she was able to fit so much stuff into that tiny space. She would never clean up on her own or make any sort of effort to put anything away. And she would always wait for me to come over. And if anyone were to come down to watch us, it was always me cleaning or organizing while she just sat back and dictated where everything went. Getting her to donate or throw anything away was like pulling teeth. As somehow, even the smallest scrap of paper had some sort of sentimental value. After a little over a year of them living together, Tia couldn't handle it anymore, and she asked Carly to find some other living situation. She wasn't going to throw her on the street, but she literally couldn't live with Carly any longer. It just so happened that my husband and I had purchased a second home around the same time. What we had owed on the first was paid off. My husband had come into an inheritance and we were able to look for our forever home that would better fit our wants and needs. The best part was that this new house was a 5 minute drive from the old house. We had yet to decide whether we wanted to sell or rent the first house when Carly approaches us with the offer of renting it from us. She and two other friends were looking to move in together and with the house being as big as it was, there was plenty of space for all of them to have their own rooms and privacy. Since we hadn't decided if we wanted to sell and there were three renters lined up, we decided to use it as a means of passive income to invest in our future. And then down the road, we would decide if we wanted to sell or keep it as a rental. Now, the red flag that I didn't initially pick up on was that Carly was referring to the house as her house to her two potential roommates, even before moving in or signing a lease. So by the time it came to them all moving in, Carly had driven the other two girls to back out. The way I had written the lease agreement was that the rent was flexible depending on how many tenants there were. So for the three of them, they would have only been paying $750 per month. And if it was only one person renting, it would be $400 a month. In this area, you can expect to rent a bedroom for $400, so this was a crazy good deal, as we didn't really need the money, and it was mainly to pay for insurance, power, heat, and property taxes. In the four years that Carly's lived in that house, rent's gone up four times once to $500 a month because the power bill went up and we needed to adjust for that, the second time to $550 a month due to the same reason, and the third time to $750 after she got a new job, and last year in October. More on that later. Also, in the four years she's lived here, two opportunities for roommates have backed out, each time because she was setting her rules and referring to the property as her house, despite having zero claim to it and the fact that each person would have to sign their own lease agreement. When she first moved in, she was working a minimum wage job and she was my friend, hence the low monthly rent. But a year and a half ago, she got a new job at a local university. The job pays very well and it's got great benefits, but somehow she manages to blow through her entire paycheck on I don't even know what. Also, during the course of these past four years, she wound up owing me $750 in back rent, as she was unable to pay me the full monthly amount due to overspending on garbage, which she then stuffed into mine and my husband's property. My husband and I then realized after a couple of years of being landlords that we're not cut out for it. We have way too much on our own plates and Carly wasn't holding up her end of the rental agreement that she signed. So we talked about it and we settled on the decision to sell. But we of course did not want to throw Carly on the street and we informed her of the plan. She then proposed to buy it from us and she starts going through the routes of getting a loan. During this process, she realized that the house wasn't what she wanted. She wanted the land and the house itself was far too big for her. She told us that and we understood. I even helped drive her to meet realtors so she could check out other options to buy houses elsewhere. 
but each one fell through, as she discovered that she wasn't going to get a new homeowner's discount or bargain with any loan she looked at. And all the loans required a minimum of a 10% down payment, which she of course did not have. And this is where the entitlement starts. Carly wasn't going to be able to buy a home, at least not the home she wanted, and she settled to buy our house. We had briefly talked at the very beginning of her tenancy that we may consider a rent-to-own situation, but no agreement had been made. No sale price had been decided, no appraisal, property inspections completed, nothing had been signed. It was simply a comment we had made, in passing, and then chatted about later, again in passing. She took it as gospel truth, and she said if she bought the house, that she expected the two and a half years of rent she paid to us to be comped off the total sale of the house. I reminded her that we never signed anything about a rent to own, and informed her that this is not how it's going to work. Her next tactic was to try to suggest that we quit claim deed the property to her. How this works is whoever owns the property grants the title slash deed to whoever they're giving it to, and it's generally a lot faster and cheaper than going through the process of buying a house. But there is still generally something paid for the property when the title's transferred. At this point, she had only paid about $10,000 in rent more than half of which went to paying for utilities that we covered, instead of having her pay them and the property taxes. And she was making it sound as she wasn't going to give us anything beyond that. I again told her that this would not be a viable option. The house was in great condition, and even with the exterior paint and repairs to the floors, it was worth at least what we paid for it, which was $118,000. She then tried to spin it that she was doing us a favor by taking it off our hands, as I had expressed to her that we were tired of being landlords and it was more effort than we had time for. Her last attempt at buying the house on her own was to offer me one dollar. That's right, a single dollar. And I will admit, I don't know if this was a failed joke attempt on her part, but it certainly fell flat, and I was so mad I was shaking, even though I laughed it off. And here's a side note. During the time she's lived in the house, my husband and I have had some stuff stored in the garage, as Carly parked on the street due to convenience, and she suggested on multiple occasions that she start charging us rent for storing things in our own house. At the end of 2022, Carly starts dating Reggie, 28-year-old male. They were long distance, and they would take turns visiting each other. And Carly made the comment to Reggie that we were looking to sell the house, and we threw out a couple of numbers, the lowest being $100,000, but said, of course, that we would have to look at an appraisal, and then look at market value, etc. He offered to buy it from us, and said that he would start the process in March. I was relieved, my husband was relieved, Carly was relieved, and everything was looking great. Now some information about Reggie at the time is he's a retired Marine. He gets a monthly check from the government for close to $2,000 on top of his well-paying job. I'm guessing based on what Carly told me, but at the time when he made the offer, he was probably making between $4,500 and $5,000 a month. Well, when March came around, Carly and Reggie informed us that he would not be able to afford paying both his rent where he lived and a monthly mortgage payment, and wouldn't be able to start the purchase process then, but would start the purchase process in October when he planned to move in with Carly. Before Reggie moved in, an ex-friend offered to rent a room in the house from Carly and pay her, despite subletting being clearly stated in the lease agreement as prohibited. Carly so generously offered to pay us some of that amount she was paid. The agreement fell through, and the friend did not stay in the room. Now I'm not exactly sure why he chose to do things the way he did, but Reggie didn't start the purchase process at all until after he moved and quit his job. Meaning, the only source of income he had to show to the mortgage company was the monthly stipend from the government, which even with a veteran's loan doesn't work as proof of income. When he moved in, rent increased to $1,000 a month, which is still undervalued for the size of the home and a brand new rental agreement was written and signed, stating that if they had not started the buying process to purchase the house from us by mid-April of 2024, that we would not be renewing the lease, nor would we work with them on month-to-month -month rental options, as myself and my husband are completely and totally over this mess. We also stated in the rental agreement that we were not going to list the house for sale as a sign of good faith, to allow Reggie and Carly the first choice on the house to buy it. And here's a rapid fire list of things that happened since October. Reggie paid the $750 that Carly owed me in back rent. Carly and Reggie informed me that they would not be buying the house, as the repairs required amounted to more than $50,000. I don't know where they got this number, as I've budgeted on multiple occasions to redo the flooring, and it would be less than $15,000 to redo the entire house. They also told me that they could not 
acquire rental housing due to having three cats, and they will indeed be staying in my house. We informed them that we're not renewing the lease, and we reiterated our reasoning. I then made the mistake of telling Carly what we owed on our mortgage, and they turned around to offer us $50,000 to buy the house from us, less than a third of the market value of the house if we sold it as is. We politely declined, and then promptly went home and screamed into pillows. They repeatedly told Tia that they're desperate for money, to the point of setting up a GoFundMe. All the while, Carly's gotten two brand new tattoos in the past year, and she has an international trip that she's paid for in full, that she's going on at the end of March. And Reggie has still not even acquired a part-time job. Carly quit her job, and now the only income they'll have after the end of this week is Reggie's military stipend. Carly then nonchalantly stated that we would have to renegotiate rent for this month and next month. There will be no negotiations. She's made a bad decision, and she'll have to live with the consequences of her actions. The most recent thing she did was text me two days ago asking if she could pay me in food for this month's rent. Knowing her, the amount that she'll pay will amount to only a couple of meals, and maybe $75 in groceries instead of the $500 that they owe. I just jokingly answered that electricity and insurance companies don't accept food as payment, so neither can I. She then offered to pay me what it would cost to pay these expenses, and then the rent she would pay in food. They will pay me in cash and nothing else. I'm done. No discussion. So my warning to all of you is, don't mix business and friends without getting to know said friends very well first. If I had known what I'd be walking into, I never would have allowed her to move in. Update number one. So the reason we let Carly move in in the first place is because she made it sound like she literally had nowhere to go. She spun a tale that her home life with her mom was unsafe, which was untrue. She also made it sound like Tia was literally kicking her out that day, which is also untrue. And she panically hounded me relentlessly in person and over the phone. Until my husband and I made a super quick decision to let her rent from us. I've learned that this is a method of manipulation. I reached out to an attorney. We've talked about everything that's happened. They read through the lease and gave us a few options. Number one. We wait until May 1st when Carly and Reggie are supposed to be out of the house. If they're not out, we deliver an intent to sell notice. That gives them 90 days to vacate the property after the lease is up. That's not ideal. Number two, we deliver the intent to sell right now. That means they have until mid-June to get the F out. That's still not ideal, but better. If they're still in the house past the 90 days, we file unlawful detainer and the cops forcibly kick them out. We can't evict because we don't have the grounds, even with all of this. The courts just about everywhere are against landlords and in favor of tenants. But the minute their rent is late, we then have grounds for eviction. That gives them 14 days to pay or get the F out. But if they pay, the eviction process ends, so that's still not ideal. They can't get squatters rights because they haven't been here long enough. I'm also going to be telling her mother everything she's done because I'm pretty sure she has no idea. I'm also telling our mutual friends. I've done a lot of self-reflection lately before writing this post and I've come to several conclusions. I know that she's not my friend. I had a false idea that I was helping someone that I saw as a friend and in the end I enabled her crappy behavior. I'm also aware I'm a doormat and I don't know how to set boundaries. I've spent a lot of time on the phone and in professional offices over the last few days. I'm on a waiting list to see a therapist and learn how to set boundaries because I don't ever want to teach my kids my bad behaviors and habits that got me into this mess. And for all of you who mentioned that it's a miracle my husband's still with me, he was with me along the whole process. I never did anything without his consent since we own the house 50-50. I'm taking most of the blame because Carly was my friend. I've apologized to him and we've had a deep conversation about working on communication. He apologized for not seeing sooner that my friend wasn't who she claimed to be and didn't warn me that I was being manipulated. Holy cow, what a mess OP got herself in. Like there were so many red flags ignored over and over and I'm just so surprised at the fact that OP knew she was a dumpster fire when she lived with her other friend, yet still allowed Carly to rent from her and let her live there for that long. Like, I just couldn't believe the disaster was allowed to keep happening. And it just sucks that OP missed the highest point in the housing market because she had to deal with this crazy person. And I'm sure you guys can guess that a lot of people are blaming OP for doing this to herself. 